information about government agencies, offices, and corporations, including local government units, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes introduced by Senator Gatsalya. Refer to the Committees on Science and Technology, Civil Service, and Finance. Senate No. 1794, an act strengthening Republic Act No. 9208 as amended by Republic Act No. 10364, titled an act to institute policies to eliminate trafficking in persons, especially women and children, establishing the necessary institutional mechanisms for the protection and support of trafficked persons, providing penalties for its violations and for other purposes introduced by Senator Gatsalian. For the Committees on Women and Science and Technology. Senate number 1795, an act providing for the lifetime validity of persons with disability identification cards issued to PWDs with permanent dis disability, further amending for the purpose of Public Act number 7277, otherwise known Magna Carta for Disabled Persons, as amended, introduced by Senator Lappi. To the Committee of Social Justice. Senate number 1796, an act providing for the development of healthcare and manufacturing industries in the Philippines to strengthen the country's readiness and protection against pandemics and providing funds, therefore, introduced by Senator Antivero. To the Committees on Health, Trade, Ways and Means, and Finance. Senate number 1797, titled An Act Facilitating the Administration of Justice by Strengthening the Fraud Detection, Prevention, and Elimination Capability of the Government by Creating a Philippine Death Check register an online death verification system under the Philippine Statistics Authority amending Section 6 of Act Number 3753 and for other purposes introduced by Senator Gordon. To the Committees on Economic Affairs, Science and Technology, and Finance. Senate Number 1798, an act providing for the compulsory registration of heavy equipment introduced by Senator Ritia Jr. To the Committee on Trade. Senate Number 1799, an act providing for the sustainable management of forests and forest lands and for other purposes introduced by Senator Ritia Jr. To the Committees on Environment and Finance. Senate number 1800, an act declaring the 16th day of May of every year a special working holiday to be known as National Education Support Personal Day, introduced by Senator Ridilla Jr. To the Committee on Basic Education and Higher Education. Resolutions. Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 13, entitled Concurrent Resolution Providing for the Legislative Calendar for the Second Regular Session of the 18th Congress of the Philippines, introduced by Senator Zubiri. To the Committee on Rules. PS Resolution Number 506, Resolution Urging the Proper Senate Committee to Conduct an Inquiry in Aid of Legislation into the Status and Progress of the Bionian Personal Protective Equipment PPE Project initiated by the Department of Health and the Department of Trade and Industry with the end in view of crafting legislation to support domestic producers and manufacturers of PPE introduced by Senator Ontiveros. The Committee is on Health and Trade. There is an additional reference of business. Additional reference of business messages from the House of Representatives. Letter. From the Secretary General of the House of Representatives dated 5 August 2020, informing the Senate that pursuant to Republic Act No. 9520, the House of Representatives has constituted the Oversight Committee and Cooperatives as follows. Chairperson, <coughs> Representative Sabiano S. Tanama, Members, Representative Lida Robles, Representative Ruth Mariano Hernandez, and Representative Anthony Peter D. Crisolomo. The Committee on Rules. Letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that on 26 August 2020, it designated Representatives Romulo, Gonzalez Jr., Escudero, Romualdez, and Fortune as conferees to the Bicameral Conference Committee under the disagreeing provisions of House No. 6910, titled An Act Institutionalizing Alternative Learning System, the Basic Education for Out of School Children, Youth, and Adults, and Appropriating Funds, therefore, and Senate No. 1365, An Act Institutionalizing the Alternative Learning System, the Basic Education for Out of School Youth, Adults, and Children, Special extreme cases and appropriating funds, therefore. The committee on rules. Committee report. Committee report number 107, submitted by the committee on the whole. Re PS resolution number 461, introduced by Senator De Lima, entitled Resolution Directing the Appropriate Senate Committee to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation into the alleged failure of the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation to feel health to release insurance claims to its accredited hospitals, which may result into the closure of the said institutions that can seriously affect our public health service delivery and response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Yes, Resolution Number 474, introduced by Senator Pangilinan, entitled Resolution Directing the Approved Senate Committee to Conduct an Inquiry Aid Legislation on the Widespread Corruption in the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation PhilHealth as alleged by a resigned PhilHealth officer, further jeopardizing the country's health care system during the COVID-19 pandemic. NPS Resolution Number 475, introduced by Senator Soto, Senator Soto III, Laxon, De La Rosa, Villar, Dilon, Villanueva, Pangilinan, Dinay, Cayetano, Recto, Angara, Marcos, Ontiveros, Revilla Jr., Zubiri, Pacquiao, Gachalian, and Poe, entitled Resolution Calling for the Constitution of the Senate Committee of the Whole, conduct an inquiry aid of legislation the alleged rampant corruption, incompetence, and inefficiency 
the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, PhilHealth, amidst the COVID-19 pandemic that may lead to the financial collapse of the institution to the prejudice of the Filipino people, recommending the adoption of the recommendations contained therein and their immediate implementation, sponsor Senator Soto III, Lacson, Delima, and Panginginan. To the calendar for ordinary business, Joint Leader, Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, with the permission of the body, I move that we transfer from the calendar of ordinary business to special orders. <clears throat> Senate Resolution Number 4461, 474, 475, and the Committee Report Number 107. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Jerry is done, so transferred. Mr. President, I move that we consider. Uh, these uh, Senate resolutions number 461, 474, and 475 under committee report number 107. And ask the secretary to read the title of the measure. The secretary will read the title of the uh, version on the, or the committee report. Yes. Committee report of the Committee of the Whole on the alleged rampant corruption, incompetence, and inefficiency in the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, Bill Health. Before your next uh, motion, Mr. Majority Leader, may we ask Senator Lacson to please uh, send to the Rosco. Rick Dave De Lima. Mr. President, are we ready to resume? Thank you, Mr. Sum. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, um, we'd like to uh, move to recognize the sponsor of the committee report, uh, no other than our distinguished Senate President, the President, Senate President Vicente Soto III. I so move, Mr. President. In objection, Chair hears none. <coughs> the Senate President is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Presiding Officer. Um, at the outset, Mr. President, I uh, would like to submit uh, to the body the complete uh, committee report. It's already been uh, placed on record. It will take, um, it took us four hours to read, most of us. Um, of course, it's not surprising because um, we had 28 hours and three minutes of hearings conducted. So I would like to thank you and the senators. I would like to thank all our colleagues for their cooperation into this um, investigation and inquiry in aid of legislation. The sponsorship speech that I prepared, I will have to admit, is quite lengthy. But I have um, edited it and confined it to the um, very most important and salient features of the report. So I will have to beg the indulgence of our colleagues uh, that because it will take uh, a little longer than usual. But I, I assure you, the more important and salient points of um, the report has to be read into the records. Um, of course, uh, this does not preclude any of our members to, um, at the proper time, include or uh, uh, add or <clears throat> even delete any portion of the committee report. But as of now, this is how it stands. And let me begin, Mr. President. <clears throat> On July 27, or 27 July 2020, Senate Resolution Number 475 was filed entitled Resolution calling for the Constitution of the Senate Committee of the Whole to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the alleged 
rampant corruption, incompetence, and inefficiency of the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, PhilHealth, amidst the COVID-19 pandemic that may lead to the financial collapse of the institution to the prejudice of the Filipino people. Although initially authored by Senators uh, Axon and this representation, it was later co-authored by most of our colleagues in the Senate. I must admit, Mr. President, that um, I take this task of reporting out the findings of the Committee of the Whole with a little reluctance at first, for we are in the middle of our fight against the COVID-19 pandemic, and that uh, we should not change horses midstream, so to speak. It is suggested that we must let the pandemic first subside before advocating for changes in the areas of leadership, organization, systems, and operations of ill health. However, it may be a worse course of action for this chamber to sit idly by knowing what it knows now, how mismanaged will help is to cope with the rising um, cost of its health responsibilities to the Filipino people. Any reform in personnel and its organization cannot come from within its ranks when all have been tainted with suspicion through active participation or inaction in the conspiracy to bankrupt ill health of its funds and resources. There is a specter that is uh, haunting the Philippines, the specter of uh, SARS-CoV-2. As of latest count, this virus has slain in its path nearly three and a half thousand, rendered ill more than 200,000 and still counting. COVID-19 has left many families orphaned, grieving and suffering. It has deprived an innumerable, left with no one to support them. The human cost is immeasurable. Compounding this despairing reality, the economy has suffered immensely a heretofore unimaginable 45.5% adult unemployment at 27.3 million Filipinos and a whopping 2.2 trillion in estimated economic losses. This virus-borne disease and the resultant suffering is more than enough to make a people fall on its knees in prayer and abject surrender. Alas for us, this is not the only disaster to be, as if this cataclysm that has befallen us is not devastating enough. We are made to suffer another catastrophe, man-made this time. The endemic corruption and gross mismanagement of field health, which is not, if not corrected or eradicated, will pose grave risks not only to health, but also the lives of all Filipinos. So the Committee of the Whole, which was constituted last July 28, 2020, conducted an inquiry in aid of legislation on the alleged rampant corruption competence and inefficiency in the field health, conducted three public hearings on the um, resolutions 461, 474, and 475 held August 4, 11, and 18. The nature of the three resolutions, Mr. President, included in the agenda of the hearings, intent on the probable administrative and criminal culpability of some personalities from the PhilHealth Board, the President and Chief Executive Officer, Senior Vice President, Regional Vice Presidents, down to numbers of ranking officials of PhilHealth. These serious allegations have put into question whether there are indeed legitimate reasons that lead to the stepping down of no less than PhilHealth's anti-fraud legal officer 
after complaining about his delayed salaries, presumptively after he started investigating the probable breach of some PhilHealth ranking officials. The discussions during the hearings were both investigative and inquiries in aid of legislation intended to reform the administrative operations of the lab. The conducted hearings also intend to look into the proposal or intended to look into the proposal to come up with sound recommendations to put an end to the allegation of corruption and put in place reforms in the administration of the country's premier health care provider through possible filing of bills to amend the PhilHealth law. The controversies surrounding PhilHealth have long been surfacing. It surfaced as early as 2015 that led to the or lead to the reported loss of billions of pesos due to some unscrupulous practices like ghost dialysis, unnecessary cataract surgeries, case upscaling, questionable rise in claims, bloated budget proposals for ICT projects, just to name some, Mr. President. In fact, sometime in 2018, Bill Health employees all around the country simultaneously signed or staged a protest to denounce the corporation's widespread corruption and inefficient management of its operations. It is the main concern of the committee that the duty of the government to serve, protect, and promote the people's right to health and maintain honesty and integrity in the public service as guaranteed by the Constitution shall be upheld at all times. The principal consideration and objective of the committee of the whole in hearing the aforementioned resolution is to gather sufficient data and information that will serve as indicators on the need to reshuffle or to totally reorganize the entire bill health bureaucracy, provide for stiffer penalties as a means of stopping the widespread frauds, as well as recommend to appropriate agencies in government to investigate and ultimately file the necessary charges to whoever is involved in the alleged malversation it necessitated. Moreover, the committee would like to determine the efficacy of the existing field health law with the hope, uh, with the hope of um, introducing administrative reforms on the ways and means to improve its operations and uphold its mandate in providing help for the Filipino people who are in dire need of medical assistance. So, Mr. President, after gathering necessary information to come up with a proposed legislation, the committee or your committee of the whole has the honor to submit the results of the three public hearings to the Senate with the following findings, conclusions, and recommendations. The series of hearings unearthed the following grave issues. Number one, the interim reimbursement mechanism, legal basis for lack of it, and its shoddy or shady implementation. Second, the ICT project as an anatomy of corruption. Third, the PhilHealth financial status, specifically the alleged manipulation of Bill Health's financial statements, earlier flogged by the Commission on Audit, its actuarial life, examining further the claim that Bill Health will die in 2021 or 2022. Fourth, irregularities in the legal sector. And fifth, the B. Brown Apitone Dialysis Centers. Let me start with the statement of facts on the interim reimbursement mechanism. This will be the reimbursement mechanism or IRM. If I ask, quote, a special privilege for the provision of substantial and to an eligible HCIs directly hit by a fortuitous event from HCI po, you know, uh, healthcare institutions. Uh, fortuitous event with clear and
and apparent intent to continuously operate and or rebuild the HCI in order to provide continuous health care services to adversely affected Filipinos. End of quote. This allows PhilHealth to grant advance payment up to three months to healthcare institutions to support their continuous operation. Now, Mr. President, PCEO Ricardo Morales cited paragraphs C, D, and J of Section 16 of Republic Act 7875 as amended, otherwise known as the National Health Insurance Act of 1995, as the legal basis for the implementation of the IRM. Bill Health Circular 0034 Series of 2013 or the guidelines on the provision of special privileges to, to affected by a, to those affected by a fortuitous event signed then signed by then PCEO Alexander Padilla served as the impetus for the IRA. Under the said circular, fortuitous events are described as acts of God like floods or typhoons, or an act of man, such as rebellions, insurgencies, and wars. Based on the circular 2020-0007, the rationale of the IRM is premised on Section 1, Letter P, Public Health Services of Republic Act 7875, as amended by Republic Act. 9241 and RA 10606, otherwise known as the National Health Insurance Act 2013. And I quote, The government shall be responsible for providing public health services for all groups such as women, children, indigenous people, displaced communities, and communities in environmentally endangered areas, while the program shall focus on the provision of personal health services preventive and promoting public health services are essential for reducing the need and spending for personal health services. As clearly seen from the statement of the objectives of Bill Health Ship, circular 2020-0007, the same is intended to ensure continuous access to Bill Health benefits and be able to provide substantial aid to HCIs in rebuilding their critically damaged healthcare system in order to provide continuous provision of healthcare services to all Filipinos adversely affected by fortuitous events. During the August 11, 2020 Committee of the Whole hearing, Attorney Roberto Labe Jr., the Corporate Legal Counsel, stated that there has been a decrease in patient census and increase of cost of hospitals. Hence, the IRM response. This is to ensure that hospitals will be able to continue its operations during the pandemic, even if these hospitals have no or low COVID-19 cases. <clears throat> now, Mr. President, the IRM has been implemented in the past to facilitate the recovery of affected HCIs to make them operational for members. In 2009, the payment scheme for IRM was implemented for accredited healthcare providers in NCR and Rizal province, province, which incurred destruction of facilities and equipment due to Typhoon Ongdoi, as identified and validated by the corporation's uh, PC number 36 series of 2009. In 2017, the IRM was used to provide substantial aid in rebuilding critically damaged healthcare systems of accredited HCIs affected by armed conflict in Marawi under PC number 2170026. In January 2020, Bill Health claimed that more than a billion pesos was made available to accredited hospitals, primary care facilities, ambulatory surgical clinics, freestanding dialysis centers, and maternity package providers in the aftermath of the Taal eruption. This was based on the, on the press release of them. On 20 March 2020, Bill had released 
PCR number 2020-007 on the implementation of the IRM for the COVID-19 response. Premised on the said circular, COVID-19 related IRM implementation appears questionable following its stated objective and to quote, to ensure continuous access to field health benefits and be able to provide substantial aid to HCIs in rebuilding their critically damaged healthcare system in order to provide continuous provision of healthcare services to all Filipinos adversely affected by fortuitous events. Bill Health Circular Number 2020-0007. What is noteworthy, Mr. President, in these previous IRM versions is the fact that HCI beneficiaries suffered serious infrastructure and recorded damages due to the occurrence of a fortuitous event. Thousands of claim records sustained flood damages that would have taken months to reconstitute. The situation demanded emergency payment arrangements to ensure the unimpeded provision of financial risk protection to members. Moreover, as differentiated from PHC 2020-0007, which authorizes PhilHealth to make advance payment to HCI. In the three previous IRMs, PhilHealth did not advance any amount to any HCI, but only ensured accelerated reimbursements of HCI's claim subject to certain conditions. Now, Confronted with a copy of an unnumbered Bill Health Board Resolution during the second Senate Committee of the Whole Meeting last August 11, 2020, Bill Health Corporate Secretary Attorney Jonathan Mamawa referred to it as PBR or Bill Health Board Regulation Number 2515, which he said was adopted 31 March, March 2020 ratifying the interim reimbursement mechanism nationwide due to coronavirus disease, COVID-19. On 22 April 2020, disseminated through the Outlook mail of PhilHealth was the SOP, the Standard Operating Procedures on the Releases of IRM. It must be noted that the SOP's effectivity was dated 21 March 2020. Now, it must be underscored that in all of the legal bases cited by field health officials, the reference for provision of health benefits pertains to regular benefit claim claims payments of field health. Paragraph C, D, J of section 16. And displaced communities and communities in environmentally endangered areas. Paragraph O of Section 1, Bill Health Circular 2020-0007. And it also mentions substantial aid to HCIs in rebuilding their critically damaged healthcare system adversely affected by a fortuitous event. Substantial aid, huh? substantial aid. Also, in the prior implementation of IRM, corresponding circulars set the requirement for field health accreditation, sustained critical damage in infrastructure and identification and validation of the corporation of the magnitude of damage, destruction of the HCIs. These circumstances are lacking or absent in the implementation of the present IRM in response to the pandemic, thus rendering the implementation void from the very beginning. The standard operating procedures or SOP on the releases of IRM was only disseminated almost a month after circular 2020-0007 or on 22 April 2020 through the Outlook mail of PhilHealth. Notwithstanding the late uh, dissemination of the document, the effectivity of the SOP was retroactively dated 21 March 2020, drawing
coming from the late dissemination of the document, it is the committee's sub submission that the SOP was antedated to support and justify the immediate execution of MOAs, or MOAs, as early as March 23, and release of IRMs on March 25 to some favored HCIs. There were already 279 hospitals which received IRM funds as early as March 25 to April 22. If indeed the SOP, a requisite document in the implementation of the IRM, was belatedly enacted and signed on 22 April 2020 and made to apply retroactively in 21 March, then we submit that the IRM releases of these 279 hospitals <clears throat> prior to such time, 22 April 2020, were irregularly made as they did not have the SOP on how the same will be released and processed at the time. Another factor that contributes to our assumption of illegality in the enactment and, implement, in the enactment and implementation of the interim or the IRM by PhilHealth was the belated adoption by the PhilHealth Board of PBR 2515 entitled Resolution Ratifying the Interim Reimbursement Mechanism Nationwide Due to Coronavirus Disease. This resolution was only adopted by the Board on 31 March 2020. Hence, we submit that PhilHealth does not have any legal justification when they implemented Circular 2020-0007 as early as 20 March 2020, which for all intents and purposes was considered an ultra virus act of the corporation. On the <clears throat> effectivity of the PhilHealth Circular 2020-007, Article 7 of the circular clearly states this circular shall take effect immediately from its publication in a, new, in a newspaper of general circulation and three certified true copies have been furnished the Office of National Administrative Registrar or owner of the UP Law Center. Emphasis is made on the requirement for the certified through copies furnished to owner O N A R of UP for the circular circulars effectivity only now. Upon the request of the office of Senator Ping Lakson, the UP owner or the UP Law Center issued a certification that Bill Health Circular 2020-0007 was filed on June 11. 2020. If we are to consider the effectivity or the effectivity date of IRM based not only from the publication in a newspaper of general circulation, but also on the submission of Bill Health um, Circular 2020007 to owner, this would mean that the IRM effectivity is deemed valid only on 11 June 2020. Thus, we submit that the total IRM releases amounting to 14 billion, 38 million, 393,329 pesos and 14 centavos from March 25, the earliest date of the release, until June 9, was deemed illegal and invalid. Furthermore, Mr. President, SBP for legal sector, Attorney Rodolfo Giorgio de Rosario, agreed that the IRM fund releases were illegal in the hearings conducted by both the Senate and the House of Representatives. He stated that it would appear that the IRM funds were not released based on the prerequisite set by the circular on publication and furnishing of copies to the owner. The 
these submissions are supported by the case of Republic of Philippines versus Philippines uh, Filipina Shell Petroleum Corporation GR number 173918 where the Supreme Court ruled that both the requirements of publication and filing of administrative issuances intended to, in, intended to enforce existing laws are mandatory for the effectivity of said issuances. Failure to observe the proper requirements makes administrative issuances to have no force and effect. Maliwanag. Ngayon, ito na malala, Mr. President. The COVID-19 budget and releases versus the PhilHealth's own estimate of COVID-19 response cost for 2020. As of June 9, 2020, the total IRM releases amount to 14 billion, 38 million, 393,329 pesos and 14 centavos. Disaggregated as follows. The hospital, hospital clarification, you will see on the board, level 1, 244 of them, 2.3 billion. Level 2, 185 of them, 4.1 billion. Level 3 hospitals, 92 of them, 7 billion. 7.1 billion. Freestanding dialysis, 48 of them, 226 million. Maternity care package, 4 of them, 4,772,000. Infirmaries, 59, 136,907,000. On another exasperating discovery, Bill Health made a huge mistake when its planned disbursement for IRM COVID was way higher than its assumptions of how many patients to eventually cover. The IRM allocations were the far exceeded the estimated cost of COVID-19 hospital admissions, Mr. President. Bill Health estimated 209,000 COVID-19 cases for 2020. About 20% of the COVID cases develop difficulty breathing and uh, require hospital care, as, the, as suggested by WHO. The breakdown of the COVID patients by case type, according to the OH, mild 90.3%, severe 0.9%, critical 0.6%. The total estimated cost of COVID, for COVID in 2020, according to them, is 3.3 billion pesos. Critical, 986,000, severe, 627,000, mild, 1.6 billion. Total, 3,301,000. Plus, plus. Bill Health estimated 3.3 billion for the cost of COVID for the entire 2020. Pero, Mr. President, ang budget na nilagay nila ay 26.8 billion pesos as of June 9, 2020. 14 billion pesos already were released. Ang layo! Saan napunta? Why did it do so? This bolsters the argument that the 90-day historical claims of hospitals as metrics was not really based on facts, but on surmises blocked from ether. Now, moving on to the questionable IRM fund releases to HCIs, as I mentioned earlier. Invalid and irregular IRM fund. That's as of June 9, 2020, uh, as far as their releases are concerned. 
there are 339 HCIs which received IRM funds amounting to more than 8.8 million in addition to several other HCIs that received various amounts under this program. Um, you will see on the board the hospital classification and the number of HCIs uh, and the funds exceeding 8.8 .8 million. As you um, browse on it, let me move to the releases to non-COVID facilities. Unlike previous IRM releases to recipient HCIs with sustained damages from fortuitous events, there was no set criteria on which HCI will receive IRM funds. Lack of such qualifiers would mean that the funds were either indiscriminately distributed or that the agency was being generous to the point of being ludicrous. The committee is not adverse to helping these other HCIs. Why not? But they should have been covered by the regular benefit packages of ill health and not through this IRM. It has also been established during the hearings, Mr. President, that the implementation of IRM is questionable after Bill Health extended the coverage of the IRM distribution to HCI beneficiaries, beneficiaries which were not included in the objective set forth in the circular of Bill Health 2020-0007. Moreover, <clears throat> The statement of PCEO Morales that IRM became COVID specific was made only sometime in May when the continuous implementation of these uh, for the IRM became untenable for lack of funds. During the August 18, 2020 hearing, Secretary Duque of the Department of Health, who is chairman of the board of PIL, a word that IRM is not specific only to COVID cases because it is based on the provisions of the National Health Insurance Act and the Universal Health Care Act that gives Bill Health the flexibility to implement financing mechanisms. Sabi niya, this is contrary to the purpose stated in the race of funds from Bayanihan to Hill as one act which is specific to COVID-19 cases. If that was so, relying on the very same app as basis for PhilHealth memo circulars, would have made that gargantuan amount of money disappear faster than the blink of an eye. Non-hospitals became beneficiaries likewise of PhilHealth's largest such may have been Bill Health and Secretary Duque's intent, but as we already concluded, the IRM was the, at the onset an ultra virus act, or illegal even, Mr. President. To reiterate, from the record of Bill Health IRM releases, or the re releases as of June 9, 2020, the total sum of 226,380,912 pesos and 20 centavos was released to 48 freestanding dialysis nationwide. 136,907,964 for 59 infirmaries and 4,772,163 was released or were released to four maternity care package providers. An official submission of the updated data on IRM releases, I believe Mr. President, should be provided by PhilHealth to validate the said figures. Now, on freestanding dialysis, the committee took particular concern to B. Brown 
Abidom Dialysis Center. Hey, Mr. President, in a span of seven days, seven days, Bill Health released almost 15.4 million and 4.2 million to two B. Brown Abidom Dialysis Center branches in Tondo, Manila. Also, its two branches located in the 2nd District of Quezon City, which received the amount of 8.95 million and 5.3 million, respectively. Note should also be made that the date when the MOAs of these branches of B. Brown, Ivytown, Philippines were filed on the same dates, April 15 for the two branches in Tondo and April 22 for the two branches in Quezon City. And the IRMs were released on the same dates, April 23 for two branches in Tondo and May 4 for two branches in Quezon City. <coughs> Ang bilis, ano? Pahirapan yung ibang hospital. Pahirapan yung mga ibang nangangailangan. Buwan nang iniintay. Ito, bilis. Seven days. Sabay-sabay pa. Now, we can go to, to, to elaborate on that later, but who is B. Brown? B. Brown, Abitum Philippines Incorporated, formerly registered as Philippine Renal Care Incorporated, is a PhilHealth accredited freestanding dialysis clinic that has 25 branches in Luzon. Freestanding dialysis clinic, folks. The, best. the following are the corporation's directors and officers based on its 2019 general information sheet. The chairman is a Lam Chi Ho, Malaysian. The president and managing director is Eduardo Rodriguez. And uh, Lee Chung Yong, Malaysian. Arsenio Ladores, Ricky Paglikawan, Yolanda Elizar, Melina Rosa Rodriguez. How much is the payment made to Bay Brown? The table shows the breakdown of IRM releases to Bay Brown Evito from April 23 to May 5, 2020, amounting to 45,176,518. The list is on the board, Mr. President. While you are uh, Checking on it, uh, allow me to take a sip of water. <coughs> Initially, it was discovered that Phil Health released almost 15.4 million and 4.2 million to two. Brown Abitum Dialysis Center branches in Pondo and in Quezon City, 8.95, 5.3 million. Noteworthy are the facts that the date when the MOAs were these branches were filed on the same dates as I mentioned earlier, were on the same dates. Now, the photos that the office of Senator Laxon have taken from the B. Brown Abitum Philippines Incorporated in Delpan Street, Tondo, on August 10, 2020, <clears throat> just a few days ago, <clears throat> showed that the center has no isolation area and only caters to outpatient services. Is the 45 million paid to be brown accurate and reflective of the services rendered to the field health member? That is the big question, Mr. President. Based on documents and testimonies provided during the committee's investigation, the same has not been established. According to ito, Machine Learning Identification Detection and Analysis System, or MIDAS, the MIDAS report submitted by PhilHealth, it was learned that from 2015 to 2018, PhilHealth has paid a total of 811 million for hemodialysis claims from B. Brown facilities across the country. It is there on the board, 
to Brazil. All the places, accreditation numbers, the regions, and the amounts. Totaling 811 million. It could easily be established based on this table, from this table, that the Tondo branch with accredita accreditation number D91027543 has the highest amount claimed from Hiller, amounting to 136 million from 2016 to 2018. The regression analysis presented by Vidas shows that the branches of Tugigarao and Tondo appear to have outlier behavior, which means that they deviate from the expected amount of claims given the hemodialysis machine capacity. Uh, yung capacity, Mr. President, as the independent variable compared to their peers. The branch in Baguio, however, which ranked as the top two in terms of amount claimed from real health, was not included in the regression study due to the zero value of uh, hemodialysis machines in the accreditation records. Furthermore, the analysis also revealed an inverse relationship between the number of hemodialysis sessions served and the average age of patients of freestanding dialysis clinics in areas 1 and 2. According to the same MIDAS report, the Philippine Society of Nephrology, Nephrology has suggested that the average capacity of hemodialysis machines is at 72 sessions per month. Using this value, we can compute the estimated capacity of B. Brown, Abiton, Philippines Incorporated branches in 2018. The table shows that six six of the B Brown branches exceed the 90% threshold for sessions to capacity ratio. The six branches are Tondo, Quezon City, Tugigarao, Binyan, Olongapo, and Baler. The list is also on the board. Further, Mr. President, <coughs> the regression analysis suggested a lower total session count for facilities catering to patients with a mean age of 52 to 55 years old, a cohort with increased mortality rate as compared to younger cohorts with chronic kidney disease. Now given this observation, evidence for ghost patients must be sought after. The report recommended that this can be done by retroactively matching the latest tech death data from the Philippine Statistics Authority. In short, Mr. President, B. Brown enjoys a fast and express lane in the release of Bill Health Payment Funds. Kahit na yung ibang branch, yung ibang branch, walang dialysis machine. Pero may mga recorded dialysis sessions. Nagda-dialysis ng multo. During the 18th August 2020 hearing, Secretary Duque admitted that IRM funds released to B. Brown Evidome was illegal and that they will rectify it. Given that admission and given SVP Del Rosario's admission, we will now be responsible, liable, and accountable for this major fiasco. The foregoing disproves Bill Health Executive's emotive assertions during the hearing that the IRM releases also covered dialysis centers because as the document shows, B. Brown Avidone still does not grant privileges to dialysis patients who are directly or indirectly related to fortuitous events. As clearly stated in Bill Health Circular 2020, 0007. The very basis of B. Brown's over 45 million IRM releases. That brings me to the issue of preferential treatment to HCIs. Again, hospital uh, no, the healthcare institution. 
intentions of IRM as a policy is that the determination of the IRM amounts for HCIs and its uh, consequent approval and fund releases are very centralized. It follows that the preference and prioritization of which hospitals will receive the IRM funds remain in the central office. In fact, according to uh, Region 8, Acting Regional Vice President Michael Gibson Hernandez, during the 11 August hearing, regional offices are, offices are only authorized to review requisite documents such as the letter of intent and memorandum of agreement. Once complete, they will forward the said documents to the central office and await for the approval, the approval which will go through the office of Dr. Ish Pargas, policy sector, and SBP Renato Limsiaco, fund management sector, to the office of HEA Laborde and finally the desk of PCEO Morales. These are all uh, reflected in the document called Document Review and Approval Request for DRAR. After the receipt of the letter of approval and the signed M MOA from the central office, the RVPs will then request for fund transfer from the office of SVP Limsiaco before they can process the release of the amount to the hospitals. A review of the documents provided by Attorney Valerie Oliero, Regional Vice President of Region 6, would show that recommendations for IRM releases, requests or IRM requests, were made as early as April 8, and consequently on April 15 for a total of 16 hospitals. Subsequent follow-up letters and correspondence at the standing, there was still no fund release approved by the central office. Local hospitals dealing with the surge in cases of new coronavirus disease have yet to collect 521 million from PhilHealth Insurance Corporation, according to Mayor Jerry Trenas. Trenas in um, August 3, a letter to Phil Helgerston, Messiah's Vice President, Valerie Ann Hildero, Olera, called the agency's attention regarding the claims of seven private and two government hospitals. Meanwhile, raised during one of the hearings was the concern of Eastern Samar Governor Ben Evardon, who claimed that the government hospitals did not receive IRM funds from Phil Helgerston IRM HCI's transaction history of Region 8 shows that as early as 20 March 2020, PRO 8 office already has submissions to the Central Office of Hospitals Letter of Intent and Memorandum of Agreement, which was re were requirements uh, for the IRM releases. In fact, from 20 March to April 20, 81 hospitals with IRM requests were already submitted to the central office for approval. Among the hospitals, Bill Health Regional Office endorsed to central office on March 23 were 10 government hospitals in Eastern Samar. Talagang nagmamadali na at hirap na hirap pero ang tagal wala nangyayari sa central office. The Central Office subsequently approved the, enforce, uh, the endorsement on April 27, but has not acted upon it since then. Hence, these government hospitals have yet to receive any IRM releases as of date. Now, during the 11 uh, August hearing also, some members of the committee, uh, or some senators, also raised the case of Hospital ng Maynila, or OSMA, which did not receive its IRM fund amounting to 19,380,108. During the interpolation, the CEO Morales insisted that Bill had already released 19.3 million to OSMA on June 23. The assertions of uh, Morales contradicted the letter of OSMA. 
to OIC Hospital Director Carm Oliver Lucky dated July 9, 2020, inquiring for an update on the IRM application of the hospital which was submitted 20 March 2020. Contrary to the submission of PhilHealth SVP Renato Limshako to the Committee of a Document Authority for Fund Transfer, showing transfer to several hospitals, including OSMA, as of June 23, based on the official receipt, MLA 9575808 from the Office of the Treasurer of Manila, showing that the amount of 19.3 million was all, all only paid out bill health on August 11, 2020. Eh kasi na, naungkat eh yung hearing. Biglang lumabas. Now, there are HCIs with no accreditation with pending cases. Worse, the IRM was even disbursed to HCIs which are not accredited by PhilHealth and have pending cases for violations of its, of its warranties of accreditation. Una na yung Katarman Doctors Hospital in Northern Samar in the amount of 9.6 million which was released on April 15. St. Benedict Hospital in Davao del Sur in the amount of 11.7 million which was released on May 5. On March 31, 2020, Acting Regional Vice President Hernandez endorsed the IRM fund availment of Katarman Doctors Hospital amounting to 9.6 million with a note purposely indicating that the hospital is under temporary suspension of payments. Sanction to notify the central office that the said HEI has a pending case with PhilHealth. Hernandez asserted that Katarman's IRM fund release was recommended pay, uh, per IRM policy that includes HCIs under sanctions as qualified to avail the IRM. A document review and approval request form, the RAR as I mentioned earlier, for Katarman shows that the SVP Spargas and Limciaco signed on April 7, 2020 while Laborte and Morales' date of signing was only April 3. On 8 April, PCEO Morales signed the memorandum approving the release of funds for the IRM request of Katarman Doctors Hospital. Na may pending, ha? Considering the timeline, it is highly questionable why the memorandum of agreement or approval of the release of funds signed by PCEO Morales for Katarman Doctors Hospital Incorporated was dated April 8, 2020 or five days earlier than his supposed document review and approval of Katarman's request. In the course of the hearing, it was established that SVP Limshako has a close relative in the Katarman Doctors Hospital Incorporated now, if this is not a case of palakasan, this committee does not know what is. On April 22, the fund was released. Katarman also says, you know, maraming hasty payment releases under the IRM. Kamantalang yung naghihikahos ng hospital na nakakailangan ay hindi pa nakakatanggap. The haste in payment releases under IRM is also noteworthy, particularly to level three, level 3 hospitals in regions 5 and 8, which had records of low COVID-19 cases at the time of the filing for IRM. Now, to underscore this, Mr. President, three level 3 hospitals, Bicol Medical Center, Bicol Regional Training, and Teaching Hospital at Universidad de Santa Isabel de Daga Incorporated from Region 5 with the record only of one COVID-19 patient, one COVID-19 patient, filed claims under IRM March 23, 2020, and just two weeks later, the fund amounting to 247 million 
46,000 meters was released to the said hospitals. Meanwhile, two hospitals, Eastern Visayas Regional Medical Center and Divine Word Hospital in Region 8, with a record only of one COVID patient at that time, received an accumulated fund releases amounting to 196.5 million in just a span of only one week from their filing of IRM claims on 23 March 2020. Also based on the record of PRO8, four private hospitals in Eastern Samar received IRM releases amounting to the sum of 21,504,564. Immaculate Conception Clinic in a hospital received uh, its IRM funds on April 24, while Domingo Casano Hospital's IRM fund amounted to 12.5 billion, the highest in Eastern Samar was released on May 5. Ito pa, Mr. President, there is non-liquidation of the IRM releases. Malala ito. This is one for the books of the Commission on Audit. We go now to the funds liquidation. On June 24, 2020, President and CEO Morales signed a memorandum on the deferment of IRM liquidation activities. He ordered the deferment of fund liquidation in effect for the claims of HCIs originally granted with IRM form or from its supposed reckoning date of 16 March 2020 to a later date. Considering that Phil helped deferred liquidation of IRM funds while directing payment of claims covered by IRM schedules. This might invite adverse audit observation memos or AOMs or notice of disallowance from the COA. Paying the claims already covered by the IRM funds, advance payment is tantamount to overlapping of payments. So, oh, in implementing this uh, memorandum of President Morales on the deferment of the interim reimbursement mechanism liquidation activities, Mr. Arnel F. De Jesus, the Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of PILHAM, issued OCOO Memorandum Number 2020-03, dated July 15, 2020, stating that Real Health Regional Offices, or PROs, were given the option on the matter of liquidation of the IRM. In other words, there were no concrete guidelines in the matter of liquidation of the IRM. Billionian, Mr. President, billionian. The optional liquidation directing stated under Memorandum Order 2020-032 contradicts Item 10 of G1 of Memo Circular 2020-0007 na sa kanila rin galing which provides that for additional IRM fund to be requested the previously released IRM fund has to be liquidated by at least 80% on or prior to the 90 days, 90 days after the occurrence of an event. Mr. President, it would appear that uh, even as we speak, Field Health has to, uh, still no guidelines for a reconciliation program or a workable mechanism to recover the millions advanced to the healthcare institution. To recover the millions, now, Mr. President, Wilhelm SVP, Israel Pargas, confirmed that liquidation was deferred to a later date, which is still to be announced. As testified by SVP, SVP Pargas during the hearing, 
I quote it. Mr. Vargas, as of today, sir, we do not have the exact date on when to liquidate according to the policy or to the memo, but we were already given an instruction to have the liquidation immediately. On the other hand, Mr. President, on 18 August, Bill Health SBP Renato Limshaho reported that 2.3 billion has been liquidated. Now, assuming that this is true, this is only 15% of the 14.9 billion they have already released. Now, between Mr. Vargas and Mr. Limshaho, who do we believe? Mr. President, let me just move on. I, I do not want to answer that question, my, <laughs> my question. Withholding taxes from the IRM fund. Bill Health is considered a withholding tax agent, Mr. President, on income tax payments and for withholding taxes and business taxes, value-added tax and other percentage tax by the BIR. Considering that IRM releases are considered advanced payments, the agency must withhold the tax due on HCIs and medical practitioners. SBP Lim Shako, during the 11 August hearing, responded adversely, stating that, ito sabi niya, relative to withholding tax and withhold natin ay private, sa government, hindi tayo nagwi-withhold. Total, 14.97 billion, lahat kalahati are subject to withholding tax. Senator Lapson said, Sa private, naka-withhold kayo? Lim Shako said, Sa private lang po. SBP Lim Shavo further said that they already withheld taxes amounting to 156 million, uh, 156 million and remitted the same to BIR on August 3. However, it appeared that the said amount was not automatically charged against IRM funds released to HCIs. He also insisted that they did not know that they could deduct this tax before the release of funds because IRN is in the form of advance payments. Hence, the BIR payments made work charge against the corporate operating budget of COB to be recoup recouped during the liquidation of HEIs. As uh, an icon from the hearings, SBP Lim Shako said, di namin alam na mawag-withhold kami sa umpisa. Hindi daw alam na isbilim siya ako na mawag-withhold kahit na may August 7, 2020 memorandum na from Jerry Divina, ASM of uh, Comptrollership Department. He was requesting for the review of a corporate memorandum subject which holding of 2% expanded withholding tax EWT in issuance of BIR 2307. In approved pa ito ni SBP Lim Shaku and SBP Santiago noong August 10 and was emailed to the concerned officials on the same day. Pero during the August 11 hearing, hindi daw niya alam or just por cento. I mean, uh, por santo, Mr. President. Considering the taxes due to the IRM releases was paid to BIR by the central office and not the regional offices, it would be a form of discount or, sorry, document tampering, if not outright falsification of public documents. If the regional offices will be ordered to release BIR Form 2307 to the HEIs within their area of responsibility considering that the taxes due to the IRMs released to the HEIs have not in fact been withheld and collected by PhilHealth. The fact that PhilHealth withheld taxes for COVID-19 IRM releases in August 3 appeared to be an afterthought following the Senate resolution dated July 26, which raised the issue of withholding taxes as one of the matters to be discussed. 
In fact, Lim Shango mentioned that access for IRM releases in prior years, prior years, were withheld. Not prior, but during the liquidation of hospital. We will deal with that during the period of recommendations later, Mr. President. Let me now move to the information technology issue. The reliability and efficiency of a credible information technology system has uh, been proven to simplify, simplify processes and to increase transparency, transparency in transactions. Example of which is the computerization of the GSIS, uh, the BIR, and other government agencies who, um, uh, which aims to benefit from IT for more efficient, accurate, and effective delivery of public services. In field health, however, it seems that the procurement and completion of their IT system has been the cause of so many, so many corruption issues. This is either they do not want a transparent system or the corruption issues in pill health is already deeply rooted. Hence, the findings of the Committee of the Whole upon its investigation, investigations are as follows. And these are the statement of mine. In a letter addressed to President Rodrigo Duterte to Secretary Harry Roque on May 15, 2020, a PhilHealth board member, Alfred Alejandro Tabadi, narrated his personal knowledge on the incidents of corruption in PhilHealth, allegedly manipulated by the Corporation's Information and Technology Department. It started with the original $2.1 billion proposal for the IT department which was rejected by the board for failure to provide specific details. Subsequently, the proposed budget was lowered to 1.9 billion since according to IT, there were typographical errors in its pre previous submission. 200 million <laughs> typo. On March 13, 2020, the board was constrained to approve the 328 million IT supplemental budget. Otherwise, they were told that the, oh, the entire field health system will collapse. Now, board member Susan Delgado even said that it seems that the board was being blackmailed in approving this amount. In the April 2020, SBP for IT, Ovita Aragona, proposed 750 million pesos for procurement of items. However, the board insisted that the internal audit report on the inventory of software and hardware be presented first before they approve anything. During the first week of May, the internal audit report was submitted. But instead of presenting it to the board, the proposal of SVP Aragona for the approval of 215 million was presented Naiba. As indicated in the internal audit report, the ICT resources included in the calendar year 2020 budget proposal but do not appear in the ISSP have a total amount of 734 million 14,120 which is 46.84% of the total amount of the proposed budget of ICT for calendar year 2020. On top of this, there is an overpricing worth 98 million 50,000, Mr. President. Incidentally, just for the record, ISSP is um, Information Systems Strategic Plan. The report also indicated that there was intent to confuse and deceive by splitting one item into two items by listing different descriptions or specifications. This is in the amount of 132 million. This vague description specification will allow the same item to be bought again the following year. Oh, ito maliwanag. Let's flash on the word, Mr. President. 
the issue on overpricing and padding. The most anomalous proposals contained in the internal audit report are the following. It's on the board. Mr. President, the, the item and then the amount of IT proposal and then the amount approved ng ISSP. Na dapat, yun ang masunod. Adobe Master Collection Software, sabi ng Bilhel, 21 million. Sabi ng ISSP, 168,000 lang. Application Services and Licenses, sabi ng IT ng Bilhel, 40 million. Dapat abroad ng ISSP, 25 million lang. Structured Cabling, 5 million. Sabi ng ISSP, 500,000. Identity Management Software, 42 million. Sabi ng ISSP, 20 million. Office Productivity Software, 21 million. ISSP, 5 million. Application Server N, 25 million. Approved ng ISSP, 14 million 800. Mr. President, COA Audit Query Memorandum Number 2020-002, dated January 31, 2020, stated that 24 network switches were verified as non-utilized, unutilized, and found inside its box at the time of inspection. Yung nabili na nila dati. 24. Non-utilization of the network switches was deemed disadvantageous to the government since the said items were not tested for any further manufacturing defects malfunction that may arise within the warranty period of the contract. However, the committee was informed by former Head Executive Assistant Colonel Loborte, uh, retired armed forces, Resigned, siya yung resigned head executive assistant, the PCEO, Ricardo Morales. That, according to him, will help, quote, is currently procuring 15 more of the same network switches that are unutilized. May 24 kang unutilized eh. Ibili ka na naman ng 15. Furthermore, these network switches are outstandingly overpriced, Mr. President, in comparison to the current market value. Grabe. Nasayang na yung 24, bibili ka pa ng 15. Nadagdagan mo. The explanations given by Phil Hell on the alleged overpriced Cisco network switches procurement are inconsistent, confusing, and indeed questionable. <clears throat> Colonel Laborte, on the other hand, is convincing because uh, being an IT and Cisco expert, expert himself, he confidently stated that what the bill held awarded was Cisco 9200 since the 2960XR model was already obsolete and no longer, well, no longer available in the market. So yung bid price po, ng Cisco's 9200 market price at 62,464 each at hindi 320,000 as asserted by Philhelm which they claim was the price of Cisco 2960XR in 2016 the bid and contract price should then be the market price of Cisco 9200 which is said to be the only uh, said to be only 62,464 Ipipilit talaga yung Cisco 2960XR. Yung binibili nila para ma-justify lang na mas mataas ang presyo. Kahit na totoo, ay yung Cisco, Cisco 9200 na mas mura ang binibili at awarded sa winning bidder. The 258,000 difference is so huge even if you include the add-ons like warranty, VAT, and delivery fee. Kahit isama mo ba yun? Overpriced pa rin. If that's the case, may hindi tayo magbayad ng warranty. Hindi mo ba? Mas muro pala eh, pag bumili nila ng bago. The committee now asks, how was the approved budget for the contract, the ABC? All right, at, who 
who came up with the ABC in the specific technical specifications for the procurement? It should be stressed that the bidders will only bid within the approved budget for the contract. So if the ABC, by the procuring entity, is bloated, the tendency is for the bidders to bloat their bid, their bid prices as well. Section 36, as a reminder, Mr. President, <clears throat> of Republic Act 9184, for the Government Procurement Reform Act provides that <clears throat> in all instances, the procuring entity shall ensure that the ABC reflects the most advantageous prevailing price for the government. Mr. President, the cardinal rule on fiscal responsibility provides all resources of the government shall be managed, expended, or utilized in accordance with law and regulations and safeguarded against loss or wastage through illegal or improper disposition to ensure efficiency, economy, and effectiveness in the operations of government. The responsibility to take care that such policy is faithfully adhered to rests directly with the chief or the head of the government agency concerned. It seems like Bill Health did not properly plan its ICT procurement in this case. During the briefing, IT chief Aragona presented this table to disprove the alleged price overpricing now. I am showing it to you. In her attempt to explain her point, Ms. Aragona showed that based on their online market search as of August 5, the amount uh, of the purchase Cisco 2960 included other services and charges which increased to 419,000 per unit. However, as narrated by Colonel Laborte, the network switches that she was presenting during the PhilHealth press conference after one of our hearings, where the network switches already procured by PhilHealth in 2016 and were delivered to the agency sometime in August and September of 2017. She was referring, well, she was not referring to the same IT equipment she was comparing apples with oranges. In the August 11 hearing also, Mr. President sent to the whole, Attorney Robert, uh, Robert Labe Jr. at first controverted the statements made by Colonel Lamorte. He supported the statements made by SDP Aragona that the item to be procured was Cisco 2960XR. However, after comparing notes and speaking with former head executive assistant Colonel Laborte, Attorney Labe himself discovered that the, the documents submitted to him were different from what were previously submitted to Colonel Laborte. The following discrepancies were noted in the documents submitted to him. To him. There is a difference in the OPCEO number and date. The absence of reference information in ITR standards specification and no determination of compliance with the minimum requirement. The latter document did not contain any information on whether the minimum requirements have been complied with and was left blank. Most importantly, the reference information regarding the brand, model, and name of company was left blank. When in fact, it is seen in the former that it contained the following, yung tamang bilid na pa, Cisco 9224-TOE. And the name of the company, Microgenesis Software Incorporated, doing business under the name and style of Microgenesis Business Systems. A careful look between the standard specifications would show that the said documents in relation to the procurement of 15 additional network switches for the same number codes oh, to the uh, 012, 01, 02, 0618, 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000 at the left corner of the document 
and ITMD 2018-04133 at the right corner of the document. So, Mr. President, from the look of things, these people from Hill Health, Hill Health, in trying to make it appear that what they procured was Cisco 2960XR, resorted to doctoring or even forging documents to make the Senate President and the members of the Committee of the Whole believe their story. What, complica what complicated the matter was the statement made by the winning bidder of the microgenesis, stating that what they have quoted is for Cisco 9200 switches. So, Mr. President, from the foregoing, it is evident that SPP Aragona, Alex Pugaboya, and the personnel of PRONCR were colluding with one another to mislead the Committee of the Whole and the Truth about the additional 15 network switches that were procured in August 2019. In the last Committee Hall hearing, uh, Committee of the Whole hearing, August 18, Bill Health's SPP and Chief Information Officer Aragona and Senior IT Officer Gaboya finally made the admission that the item being procured was Cisco 9200 and not Cisco 2960XR upon presentation of evidence that even Microgenesis, the winning bidder, stated such in an article released by them. On the second hearing, August 11, Mr. President, EIT Secretary Gregorio Honasan pointed out that the, I, uh, the ISSP must be submitted for approval before the DICT. This is a requisite before a government entity may procure any item. However, there are items in the IT budget proposal that were included which was not submitted nor approved by the DICT. Furthermore, some of the proposed items in the IT budget proposal would show that there are items without any specification and indication of number of units. The contents of the internal audit report support the ECOA audit observation memorandum on two items with a total of 29,618,000. Bill Health was not able to sufficiently explain how the internal audit report showing 734 million worth of technology resources were included in the Bill Health's budget proposal for 20. The report also revealed 98 million in alleged overpriced items and 132 million worth of items had been subjected to the splitting of contracts to avoid the requirement of holding a public meeting. Although they said it has not been spent, money has not been released, nevertheless, an attempt to defraud government and the people of the Philippines with this type of added costs are unspeakable and unforgivable. Kung inakit niyong gawin niyan, ginagawa niyo dati yan. Awarded na yung contacts eh. Awarded na eh. Inabort niyo lang eh, dahil nabuko eh. Also, Colonel Laborte disclosed that since the, he came to Phil Health, he noticed that IT projects from 2018 to 2019 were almost, always, almost awarded to a single calculated bidder. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, Mr. President, there's only one bidder participates in the bidding. And it's awarded the contract. And its bid price is always close to the approved budget for the contract. By its nature and characteristics, a competitive public bidding aims to protect public interest, Mr. President, by giving the public the best possible advantages open uh, through open competition. Clearly, ill health failed to uphold the best interests of the public and acted in a manner that is disadvantageous to the government. Um, included already in uh, the committee report, uh, are the COA observations and financial statements. 
uh, I will no longer read it in the records because it's already in uh, the committee report. And all uh, the, if uh, there are people who are interested in it, they simply uh, go to the website of COA and it will be found. Also, I need not dwell into the actuarial life of Billet because uh, during the August 4 hearing to everyone's collective is quiet to acting senior vice president and concurrent vice president data protection officer Teresa Santiago admitted that Phil Health will no longer have a reserve fund by 2022. To keep it afloat, Phil Health needs additional subsidy from government. Well, Mr. President, if SVB Santiago's statement was meant to scare the Jesus out of our stupor, it did. Therefore, there is an extremely urgent need for an intensive and extensive review and inspection of the corporation's financial life before it is, as we all will be, gone to the dogs. Just one more item, Mr. President, because all the other points are already in the committee report. This is one of the most important issues. The irregularities of the field health legal sector. It is stated in Section 17 of Republic Act No. 7875, as amended, that the field health has quasi-judicial power in order to carry out its tasks more effectively by conducting investigations or the determination of a question, controversy, complaint, or unresolved grievance brought to its attention and render decisions, orders, or resolutions thereof. As a penalty, Phil Health may impose a suspension, revocation, or restoration of the accreditation of a healthcare provider or the right to benefits of a member and or impose fines. Now, there is prolonged inaction on pending cases, Mr. President. <clears throat> Based on the submissions of Bill Health to the committee, <clears throat> for the period of 2000 to 2019, nine years, there are 7,452 pending cases against healthcare institutions which involved both fraudulent and non-fraudulent offenses. However, for the same period, only 5,327 5, was decided on by the agency. This means that for a span of 19 years, only 71% of cases was up to the fund relative to cases against healthcare institutions. As regards cases against healthcare professionals for the period of this 19 years. There are 4,792 pending cases in the agency, which comprises 1,968 fraudulent offenses and 2,824 non-fraudulent offenses. However, based on the same documents submitted by Phil to the committee, only 45.97% of the pending cases against healthcare professionals was disposed by the agency in a span of 19 years. To scrutinize it further, out of 1,968 fraudulent cases, only 70, no, 745 was decided upon by Philhelm, which is equivalent to a measly 37.85% of cases disposed. While for the non-fraudulent offenses against healthcare professionals, out of the 2,824 pending cases, only 1,458 cases were decided upon by the agency, which translates to 51.62% case disposable or disposal rate for a period of 19 years. Likewise, during the uh, 18 August 2020 hearing, uh, your Yours truly, this representation, raised an issue on wholesale amnesty brought to the field board or the field health board. <clears throat> it was admitted by the resource person that indeed it was done by the board, but as to the frequency 
no clear answer was given. This was how the discussion went. Allow me to read some of the portions of the discussion. The chairperson. Now, I received information that on May 14, Attorney Del Rosario, the protest and appeals review department of part under the legal sector headed by Attorney Del Rosario, presented the bill of court. He appealed claims for 2011 to 2019 worth 3.9 billion for wholesale amnesty. The Philhelm Board approved the amnesty for the appeal claims with, um, were only worth 668 million. Now, these are the questions. First, since the start of the operations of Philhelm, how many times has the board declared wholesale amnesty? Step Del Rosario did not answer. So, the chairperson said, perhaps Secretary Duque can answer the original question. How many times has the board acted on all this amnesty? You were there for a long time, Secretary Duque. As head, as DOH Secretary, field head. Do you know how many times they declared wholesale amnesty? Secretary Duque. As I have said, Mr. President, I do not have a recollection of how many times we as alleged that there was a wholesale grant of amnesty. But I will look into it, Mr. President. Mr. Senate President, rest assured. Yun ang mga ayaw na ayaw natin na sagot eh, no? Hindi, titignan po namin. Ay, sasagot namin. Anyway, I said, so you're saying that this is the first time you have been there since 2000 during the time of former President Makapagal Arroyo? Nagkadali Duque. If I may, with your permission, Mr. Senate President, I would like to direct that corporate secretary who holds the records, Tony Jonathan Mangawa. Tony Mangawa, how many times have you declared that? Sagot niya. I came in as corporate secretary only 2017. So from 2017 onwards, Mr. President, I can attest that this is the first time that wala tayo na kung maganda sagot eh, no? Although, this representation has no issue on the fact that the board has exercised the same. What concerns me is the fact that these cases submitted for wholesale amnesty have been pending with the partner of protest and peer review department for nine years. Such failure to act in gross neglect of duty have resulted to the financial prejudice of peer health and the health care providers, as the case may be. While SBP for legal sector Rodolfo de Rosario projects that he is against fraud, it seems that the records prove otherwise, considering that a lot of cases are still pending or unenacted upon by the agency. Another topic relative to the irregularities in the Bill Health's legal sector that puzzled this committee is the agency's supreme power. Ito, Mr. President, dahil nila Supreme Court. Oh. Or to modify, if not disregard, the final decisions made by higher courts. But in dito, during the course of the hearing, the case of Perpetual Soccer Hospital was brought up due to the irregularity done by the Bill Health Board by not executing the decision of the Court of Appeals, which affirmed the earlier decision of the Bill Health Board to impose the three-month suspension of accreditation of the said hospital and for the pay per payment of 10,000 pesos to be held. The said act is a clear violation of the doctrine of immutability of judgments. Likewise, in so doing, it is as if Bill Health tolerated the fraudulent act of perpetual software hospital. And ultimately, such action of Bill Health further caused losses from the coffers of the agency by reason of the releases the bill had made to the hospital during its supposed suspension or a suspended apathy. The bill had implemented the board's earlier decision which was affirmed by the court of appeals. Then, okay sana. But it was revealed by, it was revealed, revealed by SVP Del Rosario during the hearing that the basis of the board is changing the penalty to payment of fine amounting to 100,000 instead of the three-month suspension and a fine of 10,000 is a board resolution. 
allowing the conversion of decision affirmed by higher court. Kaya maliwanag, ang doon po sa record yung sinagot niya. Sabi niya, anyways, to answer your question regarding the perpetual sugar, it was a decision by the Philhelm Board of Directors based on a policy that was not based, decided even before I was appointed and tinuturo niya yung board. Eh, pala ka naman, meron. Meron board to solution to that effect. Since the action of the board in converting decisions of higher courts was anchored on and backed by an earlier board resolution, the perpetual soccer hospital case is not the first case. Whose decision was converted by the board as narrated by Corporate Secretary Jonathan Mangawa on 11 August of the committee. Siya mismo ang nagsabi na, I quote, the health board decision of perpetual case is not actually the first decision of the field health board where it modified a decision of the Court of Appeals. Uh, no Supreme Court. The president. Although the field health board has quasi-judicial powers, its, pa its powers are only exercisable in matters that with are within its jurisdiction, particularly when the cases are still pending the agency's decision. And it does not extend when a higher court has already acquired jurisdiction over these cases. It is already well settled, as stated in the 2004 case of NHA versus Court of Appeals, that a decision that has acquired finality becomes immutable and unalterable, unalterable, and may no longer be modified in any respect, even if the modification is meant to correct erroneous conclusions of fact and law and whether it may be made by the court that rendered it or the highest court of the land. Mr. President, another issue related to the irregularities in the legal sector of Bill Health is the diluted cases against any Bill Health official. In an incident involving some employees of the Bill Health Regional Office Region 2, were involved in an advertently depositing 9.7 million in Balanga Rural Bank, which is supposedly supposedly due to B. Brown, Abitum, Philippines, and be deposited to its bank account, Tushba. During the August 11 hearing, it was established that this blunder by the subject employees of uh, PRO2 was solely be blamed on human error. Now, to wit, Ms. Aragona, yes, as far as I can remember, sir, Yung balanga, when it was reported to us, ang naging problema po yata isang pag-select ng bank for the transfer. So I think there was an incident report on that. Yung doon sa mismo ano natin na region. So I had to get the details. Pero yung po yung natatanda ko na. So there was something na nagkaroon ng error sila doon sa pag-select. Senator Lacson, anong klaseng error? Man-made itong error na to? Hindi pwede siyang machine ang mag-error dito kasi very strict kayo sa mga online transactions. Ms. Aragona, opo, Senator Lacson, hindi pwedeng mag-crossover ng regions kasi ina-apply na yun. However, Mr. President, despite the substantial amount involved in the infraction of the employees, or the employees involved, only a simple neglect of duty was filed and needed out against them. In a similar vein, as pointed out in the committee hearings in the case of Pamela Del Rosario, which involved fraudulent claims amounting to 1.17 million with its indispensable participation of field health employees. Based on the investigation report, Regional Special Investigation Team of Field Health dated May 6, submitted to then Regional Vice President Dr. Leo Douglas Cardona Jr. He recommended cases to be filed against the airing employees were Dapat, syndicated is tapa, falsification of documents, usurpation of authority or official functions, violation of the field health law, serious dishonesty, gross neglect of duty, rape is conduct, among others. Yet, what was filed against the employees involved were just simple misconduct. When the field health resource persons were asked regarding this, None of them denied the report. <clears throat> Another case in, uh, in point to prove the delusion of cases by Hibillard Propitious is the very case of Attorney Del Rosario himself. 
SBP for legal sector. Although the case happened when he was the head of physical infrastructure resource department, as raised during the August 11 hearing, Atole Del Rosario was charged together with one senior vice president with an administrative case of budget insertion relative to the construction of Hill Health Corporate Center. While the senior vice president was relieved from his office, Attorney Del Rosario was just found guilty of simple neglect of duty and was fined am amounting to his 15-day worth salary. E pagkaganyan, Mr. President, e mawiwili talaga yung mga patangtaduhan ng mga empleyado. Huwag ka ganun-ganun lang ginagawa natin. If the internal policy in PhilHealth is really to grant its employee impunity or impose on them penalties that are not that are not commensurate to the violations committed, the committee is not surprised why the performance of the agency is very dismal and deplorable. It could be easily deduced that there is indeed a systemic problem in field health that has to be immediately remedied, especially that the agency plays a vital role in the delivery of the health care services. Which brings me now, Mr. President, to the recommendations of the committee. <clears throat> the committee of the whole consolidated in this report all the inputs, particularly the recommendations submitted by the following senators. Senator Pampilo Lacson, Senator Juan Miguel Subiri, Senator Franklin Rilon, Senator Sani Angara, Senator P. Reitano, Senator Aquilino Coco Pimentel, Senator Grace Poe, Senator Francis Tolentino, and Senator Cynthia William. Considering all the findings of the Committee of the Whole that this representation just presented, we therefore recommend the filing of criminal charges against the following. <clears throat> Number one. Attorney Rodolfo de Rosario, Jr., Senior Vice President for Legal Sector, and all other field health officials and employees, as may be determined, may be determined by the Department of Justice, who connived with and participated in the consummation of the Punishment Illegal Act, particularly for their failure to, come upon, to act upon and or neglect of duty to cause prosecution of cases before them. Article 208 of the Revised Penal Code, prosecution of offenses, negligence, and tolerance. Violation of Republic Act 3019 for the anti graft and Corrupt Practices Act. Number two, Ms. Sovita Aragona, Senior Vice President for Information Management Sector. Mr. Calixto Gabuya, Jr., Acting Senior Manager, Information Technology and Management Department, and all other field health officials and employees who connived with and participated in the consummation of the punishment slash illegal act, particularly for their act of order pricing IT supply and the concealment alteration of documents pertaining thereto. Article 171 of the Revised Penal Code falsification by public officer, employee, or notary, or ecclesiastic minister. Article 213 of the Revised Penal Code, frauds against the public treasury and similar offenses. Article 226 of the Revised Penal Code, removal, concealment, or destruction of documents. Violation of Republic Act 2019, or sorry, 3019, for the anti graft and Corrupt Practices Act, in violation of Article 2 of Republic Act 9184 for the Government Procurement Reform Act. <clears throat> Number three, Secretary Francisco Duque III, <laughs> Chairman of the Board, Brigadier General Ricardo Morales, former President and CEO, Mr. Arnel de Jesus, Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Renato Limciago, Jr., Senior Vice President for Fund Management Sector. Mr. Israel Francis Pargas, 
Senior Vice President for Health Finance Policy Sector, and all other Bill Health officials and employees who connived with and participated in the consummation of the punishable illegal act. Specifically, for their improper and illegal implementation of the IRM, the Interim Reimbursement Mechanism, against its duly authorized purpose under the law, and for their grave abuse of discretion or gross negligence in ascertaining the IRM beneficiary without valid criteria for distribution. Article 217 of the Revised Penal Code, Malversation of Public Funds or Property. Article 220 of the Revised Penal Code, Illegal Use of Public Funds or Property. Violations of Republic Act 3019 or the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act. Number four, Mr. President. Secretary Francisco, Francisco Duque III, Chairman of the Board, Brigadier General Ricardo Morales, former President and CEO, Mr. Arnel De Jesus, Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Renato Limciaco Jr., Senior Vice President for Fund Management Sector, Mr. S Mr. Israel Francis Fargas, Senior Vice President for Health Finance Policy Sector, and all other PhilHealth employees and officials who connived with and participated in the consummation of the punishable illegal act. This is specifically, for their failure to withhold tax liabilities of healthcare institutions to which they released IRM funds and for their act of charging the corporate operating budget for failure to withhold the taxes in the advancement of funds through the IRM. Article 217 of the Revised Penal Code, malversation of public funds or property, violation of the National Internal Revenue Code, violation of Republic Act 1051, violation of Republic Act 3019 or the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act. Mr. President, in addition to the criminal charges that the committee recommends to the Department of Justice and the Ombudsman, we also recommend to the DOJ and the Ombudsman to file PhilHealth, file against PhilHealth officials, employees, um, administrative cases. This committee likewise recommends them to file administrative, administrative case against Brigadier General Morales and SBP Dennis Mas, Management Service Sector, for not implementing the board resolutions on 30 resignations, which is clearly a neglect of duty and insubordination. File administrative case against General Morales, Executive Vice President, and CEO Arnel De Jesus, and Mr. Arnel De Jesus, uh, Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer for violating COVA rules on the period of liquidation in issuing Memorandum Circular 2020-03. File administrative case against Attorney Rodolfo De Rosario, SPD for Legal Sector, and all other officers and employees of the Protest and Appeal Review Department of Bill Health for failure to act in gross neglect of duties relative to the cases pending in their department. Ensure that the administrative and criminal cases are timely filed against responsible individuals, health care institutions, and corporations. Filing charges against responsible individuals healthcare institutions and corporations will prove ill health and the government's commitment to ensure that government funds are not mismanaged and that corruption is not tolerated. Further, cases and subsequent convictions will serve as a deterrence for others with corrupt intentions. Given the observation of the B. Brown Abitum Philippines Incorporated evidence for ghost patients, must be sought after. The report recommended that this can be done by retroactively matching the latest death data from the Philippine Statistics Authority. And also recommended to PhilHealth 
Here are some of the committee's recommendations. <clears throat> Immediately require from the healthcare institution which received IRM funds to liquidate utilized IRM funds and return the unutilized amount. Impose a definite deadline, therefore, and strictly implement the same. For PhilHealth, to immediately pay the claims of private hospitals, prioritizing those which are COVID-19 referral hospitals in those with high cases of COVID-19 admissions. Increase the involvement of the COA in PhilHealth in every stage of operations of PhilHealth. As revealed in the hearings, the Commission on Audit is having a hard time in auditing PhilHealth due to the difficulty of obtaining documents from PhilHealth. Central Office, Aluna. So COA should be allowed to pursue its mandate to conduct the necessary audits even at the regional level without any hindrance from PhilHealth to ensure that government funds are properly managed and spent. Outsource the IT services of PhilHealth. PhilHealth should simply outsource to a reputable company the provision of its IT services which include but not limited to development and provision of a reliable electronic health records and analytics system, specifically for membership data information collection and membership services. Or field health to contract out the processing of its benefits claim to avoid backlogs and massive reimbursement delays. This would simplify the reimbursement process, remove red tape, and address corruption. <clears throat> the Senior Vice President Legal Sector must have at least five years of legal practice or have held a public office requiring admission to the practice of law as an indispensable requisite. Also, for the high-ranking officials of the Bill Health Insurance Corporation or the Philippine uh, Insurance Corporation, starting from the Chief Executive Officer, to the regional vice presidents to file their courtesy resignation in compliance with the board resolution in relation thereto. And to be able to give the president of the Philippines a free hand to appoint new officials for the people to regain its trust on PhilHealth. For PhilHealth to implement a regular reassignment of its regional vice presidents to a different region every three years. No regional vice president should be reassigned to the same region more than twice in his in, or her entire tenure in PhilHealth. For PhilHealth to strengthen its enforcement and legal division to various regional offices to help expedite and ensure the success in prosecuting any cases, whether pending in PhilHealth or those filed in regular courts or quasi-judicial bodies. As for the Department of Budget and Management, Mr. President, the committee is calling for the DVM to its procurement service to execute the necessary procurement in PhilHealth's stead on the latter's information technology needs, whether hardware or software. Another recommendation of the committee that will provide additional layer of protection to ensure PhilHealth will be financially sound and solvent in that transaction fall within acceptable parameters. It's for the Insurance Commission to be involved in scrutinizing the operations of PhilHealth. For the GOCC, for the Governance Commission for GOCCs, I should say, as the governing body for government corporations, the committee urges it to actively and decisively perform its mandate as a central advisory <clears throat> monitoring and oversight body of Bill Health. In particular, it should <clears throat> identify the necessary skills and qualifications required for appointing directors to the Bill Health and consider the suitability and qualifications of the candidates before submitting its recommendations to the President. 
The fit and proper rule should be strictly applied. The directors must be chosen based on their integrity, <clears throat> experience, education, training, and competence of all others. Take a proactive role in evaluating the performance of Bill Hefts, directors and officers, and discipline them if necessary. Conduct periodic evaluation and assessment of the performance of Bill Hefts. Require reports on the operations and management of the corporation, particularly on the management of the assets and finances as provided. Recommend appropriate measures to improve Bill Hefts' overall performance and service delivery in accordance with its mandate based on its most recent performance for And last for the GCG, we call on them to conduct a special audit for Bill Health's finances, possibly in the last five to 10 years. The committee is likewise seeking the Anti-Money Laundering Council for it to immediately investigate and determine whether the bank accounts of those Bill Health officials and private entities that have been implicated in the malversation of Bill Health funds all within the category of the so-called suspicious accounts. And also, Mr. President, for the various Senate committees, the Committee of the Whole has provided for a number of recommendations that are contained in this report that we expect to be timely acted upon. In closing, Mr. President, our country is in dire straits. Gross domestic product shrunk 16.5% from a year ago, according to the National Statistics Agency. The worst reading in a data series going back to 1981, and that is a fact. The pressure on government finances becomes even greater as we try to implement the Universal Health Care Act which aims to cover all of us. Ill health is in a deep hole as well. How deep we are not certain yet. Unless we discover the real state of ill health finances, we will never know. <clears throat> and that lack of knowledge is something all of us can ill afford to have. High unemployment caused primarily by the closing of businesses due to COVID-19 will result in fewer individuals from whom pill health can exact premiums. That is another blow to pill health, Mr. President. As if that is not bad enough, pill health is hemorrhaging because of inefficient running of the corporation, compounded by corrupt practices inside. Fortunately for us, the latter two causes are preventable and can be solved by us. <coughs> we must thus exert our utmost authority and vigilance to read, read till help of undesirables and punish to the fullest extent of the law criminals. Less than this we cannot allow. Our suffering people deserve nothing less. Mr. President, public service demands total honesty from its public officials and employees. And may I add, using the classic admonition by the ancient Romans, they must not only be pure and honest, but also perceived to be pure and honest like Caesar's wife. Thank you. Good afternoon, my dear colleagues. Ladies and majority leader. Thank you, Mr. President. First of all, the onset, I'd like to congratulate our Senate President for a very comprehensive report on the uh, discussions and investigations on field health. Congratulations, sir. Uh, we have uh, several of our colleagues lined up that would like to give their uh, co-sponsorship uh, and as well as manifestation of support, uh, Mr. President. First on the list uh, who called me ahead, uh, way ahead uh, earlier, Mr. President, is uh, Senator Bongo, after which will be Senator Bong Revilla, Senator uh, Manny Pacquiao, and uh, Senator Villanueva as well will be next. 
Do you recognize them, Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the committee report states that uh, the findings of the Senate on the issues hounding the field health. I congratulate this uh, August uh, Chamber for our efforts to help the administration in, in its uh, campaign against corruption. I agree with most of the recommendations stated in the committee report. However, I leave it to the President to judge as the sole appointing authority if there is a need to make uh, changes uh, in his uh, cabinet. This is my only reservation upon the signing of the committee report. Nevertheless, uh, I commend my colleagues in the Senate for these findings and recommendations that will help our colleagues in the executive branch in doing their jobs. Dahil sa efforts natin dito sa Senado, lahat po, lumabas ang uh, katotohanan after numerous hearings, uh, heads will finally roll. Less than two years na lang sa pwesto ang ating uh, Pangulo at sana ay uh, patuloy po tayong magtulungan para tuluyang masupo ang korupsyon. Bukod dito, kailangan na kailangan rin natin na maayos ang healthcare insurance system, lalo na ngayon panahon ng pandemic. Nakita naman natin sa mga hearings last year pa na kailangan talagang malawakang pagbabago sa pagpapatakbo ng uh, real health. Kagabi lamang, nakapagtalaga na po ang ating uh, Pangulo ng bagong mamumuno ng uh, PhilHealth to Atty. Uh, Dante Geran, dati po itong uh, NBI Director. Sana po ay uh, nasa palagi mong isang puso ang, sinasa, ang sinabi ng ating uh, Pangulo. Narinig ko po yun. At ang mandato natin bilang mga public servants, your job is to stop corruption. Put the sila Putla ilang kamot, isaya yun. Wala na kayo mintindi. Sa English, do your best. Ang, ma ang marching orders sa, sa iyo ng Pangulo ay uh, dinisin mo ang ahensya, but also ensure that the public gets the best services from PhilHealth. I am optimistic that you will be able to focus on stopping the deep-rooted systemic corruption that has been there in the agency for many years already while balancing the need to improve field health in providing the best service to Filipinos through better access to quality health care, especially during this time when the country is facing a health crisis. Ang magiging mission mo ay ibalik ang tiwala ng taong bayan sa field health at siguraduhin na ang pondo ay magagamit sa tama para mabigyan ng maayos na serbisyo ang mga Pilipino, lalo na pagdating sa kalusugan. Ibigay dapat sa tao ang serbisyong dapat nilang makuha ang gusto natin marinig sa mga susunod na reports kung ilang pasyente Pilipino ang natulungan ng Pilipino. Bukod pa sa pag-account kung ilang milyon ang nawaldas at dapat maibalik po ito yung mga nakurakot at dapat po ay managot at kung sino-sino pa ang dapat masuspindi, masisante, makasuhan at uh, makulong yung mga napatunayang nagnapo. Nagutos na rin po ang Pangulo ng reshuffling ng Regional Vice Presidents ng PhilHealth at yung mga iba pa, not only Regional Vice Presidents, basta involved po sa katiwalian at uh, hindi matanggal sa pwesto ipapasahin niya po sa Malacanang. Ongoing na rin po ang pag-imbestiga ng task force na ginawa ng ating uh, Pangulo sa mga subject uh, ng investigations. Please cooperate. Kung wala naman kayong kasalanan at wala kayong itinatago, hindi kayo dapat uh, matapot. Sa mga magnanakaw sa PhilHealth, inuulit ko, hindi natatapos dito sa pagsuspinde o sa pagsibak sa inyo. Siguraduhin namin na mananagot kayo sa batas at makukulong kayo. As long as there are people like you in government, you will not stop in our efforts to remove rotten eggs like you who are destroying public service and the public's trust in government. Sabi ko nga noon, kung hindi lang magagalit ang mga human rights advocates, dapat pilayan o putulin ang daliri o kamay ng mga korap para matigil na talaga ang kalokohan. 
kung may reklamo ang human rights sa uh, advocate sa, sa aking rekomendasyon, welcome naman po kayong tumulong sa laban na ito. Kung willing po sila, pwede rin po silang magbigay ng rekomendasyon kung paano andarin at linisin ng bill health. Aside from fighting for human rights, I urge you to also look into the other rights of our people. Karapatan rin ng Pilipino na mag mabuhay ng tahimik at yung pera nila ay walang masasayang o mananakaw dahil sa korupsyon. Ang pinaglalaban ko dito ay ang karapatan ng bawat Pilipino na dapat mabigyan ng assurance na ang pera nila ay nagagamit sa tama, nararamdaman nila sa pamag pamamagitan ng uh, maayos na serbisyo mm. at hindi po mananakaw sa mga kurapot dyan. Mm. Let this also be a warning sa mga magnanakaw sa iba't ibang ahensya. Lalabas at lalabas rin po ang uh, katotohanan. Ang walang katapusang korupsyon ay para rin pong pandem pandemya. Kailangan talaga na magkaroon ng bakuna o gam gamot na tatalab laban sa sakit na korupsyon na sumisira sa kalidad ng serbisyo at integridad ng gobyerno. Marami naman sa gobyerno na anes at gusto lang po magsipi sa kanilang kapwa Pilipino. Huwag nating hayaang uh, mahawaan sila ng uh, sakit na ito. I urge my uh, colleagues to continue helping the administration in cleansing government. Kung may nakikita po kayong uh, katiwalian, labas natin dito. Hindi tayo nagtatapos sa PhilHealth lamang. May mga iba't ibang ahensya pa po dyan na may problema ng korupsyon sa loob at sa baba. Tuluyan na natin. Let us work together to get to the bottom of this. Uh, those from the executive, those from the legislative, even those in the judiciary, magtulungan na lang po tayo. We need a whole of uh, nation approach in order to give Filipinos the kind of service they deserve. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Rangago. Majority Leader. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Just to remind you on the list, uh, next to uh, give the manifestation is Senator Bongo, after which, I'm uh, sorry, my, my apologies, Senator Bongo Villa, uh, Senator Manny Pacquiao, Senator Joel Villanueva, Senator Pia Caetano, Senator Sunny Angara, and uh, also Senator Cynthia Villar. Senator Dillon also wishes to uh, give some interpolation later on to the Senate President. Uh, if the Senate President can patiently wait after all these uh, manifestations, Mr. President. And Senator Gordon as well would like to give a... Is it interpolation, sir, or a manifestation? Uh, Senator Gordon. Are you on mute, sir? You're like on mute. Like I told the, uh, the Senate Committee as a whole, I, have, I was going to submit my committee report or my chairman's report. It's very hard to get in touch with everybody, so it, it is a chairman's report. And uh, I'd like to be able to deliver it tomorrow uh, to everyone. It doesn't go against the report. In fact, I'm supportive of the report of our distinguished Senate President. But I'd like to reserve my uh, right uh, to uh, be able to sponsor or uh, explicitly on the findings of the Committee on Blue Ribbon, your Committee on Blue Ribbon, on the matter of uh, uh, the corruption uh, in uh, will help from another aspect, Mr. President. So yes, I want to make the presentation yes. and congratulate our Senate President for a job well done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we take note of the uh, the request of our dear uh, colleague from Zambales. Mr. President, may we now recognize Senator Bong Revilla, Mr. President. Senator uh, Ramon Bong Revilla Jr. is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, at the onset, may I commend the Senate President and the uh, Committee of the Whole for coming out with an ex exhaustive and well-written report. It is unfortunate that I was unable to participate fully during the hearings. May I just put into the records, however, my full support to the committee report, specifically on most of the recommendations. And if the good sponsor will allow, will allow I would like to submit some comments and additional recommendations. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator uh, Revilla. Senator Manny Pacquiao is recognized. Uh, uh, Collins. Okay, uh. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, 
Canada. I would like to commend our uh, Senate President, Senate Soto III, and all our colleagues uh, in the Senate uh, for the courage and boldness uh, to stand against uh, corruption, uh, incompetence, and uh, inefficiency in field health. Ang field health ay para sa ating mga kababayan, lalo na uh, sa mga walang uh, kakayahan na magbayad para sa health services. Sa gitna ng pandemya, mas lalong umaasa ang ating mga may naghihirap na mga kababayan sa ating gobyerno. Now, itong billion-billion ang, ang pinag-uusapan dito sa PhilHealth. Instead na encourage natin ang sabay ng Pilipino na naghihirap, na mawalag, huwag mawalan ng pag-asa, huwag madiscourage sa buhay, eh itong, itong balita na ito na na-discovery natin, itong uh, corruption na ito. Ano na lang ang ang hindi ko hindi ko lubos maiisip ako kasi nararamdaman ko uh, kung ano pagiging mahirap. Ano na lang ang pakiramdam ng mga mahirap pa yun? Ano ano sino pang inaasahan nila sino pang aasahan? Nila? Hindi ko na hindi ko maintindihan kung ano nangyayari na sa ating uh, sa ating uh, bansa. Ang dami ng uh, corruption, ang daming ang daming nagugutom, ang daming naghihirap. Sino pa ang pagtitiwalaan ng mga tao? Sino pang... Pag-ibig sa President, but, uh, ako kasi madamdamin ako pagdating sa mga, sa mga ganyan sa President na para sa mga mahihirap. At uh, alam ko, ang buong Senate at ang mga aking kasamahan hindi ito hanggat hindi na ipakulong lahat ng mga involved dito sa PhilHealth. At hindi lang ito dito sa PhilHealth. Hanggat nandyan, tayong lahat sa pagsiservisyo hanapin natin ang mga taong involved sa corruption na nagpapahirap sa ating mga kababayan Pilipino. Nagpapahirap sa ating bansa. Sir President, we will push for reforms. Mananagot ang mga kurakot. Magkaroon ng pagbabago sa PNHM. Di ko man, masakit talaga ang loob ko, Mr. President, dahil for how many um, heads na nilagay dyan sa PNHM Example na lang si, si uh, pasensya na po kayo, Mr. Morales, pero ito po yung nararamdaman ko. Ilagay po kayo ng Pangulo dyan dahil ang Pangulo ayaw ng corruption. Ilagay ka ng Pangulo ayaw ng corruption, tapos nung ilagay ka dyan, dapat binunugar mo lahat yung mga anomalya na nalaman mo para ikaw pa ang magiging hero ng bayan. Ikaw pa ang saluduhan namin lahat dahil sapagkat talaga sa'yo, pinulgar mo lahat ng ano. Pero ano yung hindi ako satisfied doon sa sagot mo, na sabi mo na, na, yan na kasi yung uh, kinagis na nung naupo ako. Eh, therefore, dapat imulgar mo kung ano yung mga anomalya. Mga kababayan ko, mga kasamahan ko sa gobyerno, mga empleyado, public officials, elected or not elected, Please, kahit ako, hindi ako magsirbisyo sa government, basta maayos ang ating magsirbisyo para sa mga mahirap na tao. Please, ang mga tao na nagihirap, random ko ang guto, random ko ang kapangailangan, random ko ang kanilang paghihirap sa buhay. At itong PhilHealth, it, isa ito sa nakakatulong sa ating mga kababayan na nagihirap. PhilHealth, DSWD, yan ang inasahan, yan ang katingala halos lahat ng mga kababayan natin na naghihirap. Sa totoo lang, kailangan natin dito sa bansa na to, hindi kailangan ng yung utak na talagang genius ka. Ang kailangan dito sa bansa natin, puso-puso pa na nagpamahal sa para sa mga kababayan natin. Yun ang kailangan natin, utak. Mayroon na tayong utak. Alam natin, alam nga kung paano mag -urap. 
Ang problema natin dito, puso. We need a true leader na nagmamahal talaga sa mga mahirap, nagmamahal sa ating bansa. And I'm hoping, and we're so blessed because of this administration, I'm hoping na lahat naman ng kurap ngayon makikita natin at ng bagsabayan ng Pilipino na malagay sila behind bars. Malagay sa kulungan para maging halimbawa sa lahat. Grabe. And Mr. President, we will not fail our people. That is what? That is our uh, solemn oath as public servants. With this, I fully support the approval of the committee uh, report of the committee of the whole. But before I end my my uh, uh, manifestation, Mr. President, uh, forgive me. Uh, uh, emotional ako. Um, uh, pagsabi ako ng uh, medyo hindi magandang words, but yun po ang nasa puso ko. But before I end my manifestation, Mr. President, I would like to leave this verse. And Lucas, Luke 16, verse 15. He said to them, You are the ones who justify yourselves in the eyes of others, but God knows your heart. What people value highly is detestable in God's sight. So remember this. What? <clears throat> Whatever you have in your position right now, pag tayo namatay, iwanan natin lahat yan. Tandaan natin, mga kababayan, mga public officials, ang ating mga anak, ang, mga, ang sabay ng Pilipino nakatingala sa atin, umaasa sa, sa ina ng bayan, sa ama ng bayan. Tayong lahat yun na nagsisemplisyo at elected. So I'm hoping na magkaisa tayo, tulungan natin yung mga mahirap. Ako hindi ko pinapangarap na kung anong posisyon ako, basta ako makatulong sa taong bayan. Kasi ang galit ako, may sarili kong pera, kinakasusun para sa taong bayan eh. Tapos yung para sa mga mahirap, pinatakaw pa yung pera. Mahiyan naman kayo lahat. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Pacquiao, Senator Joel, Julian Rivas, Sego Guys. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Let me start by also quoting a verse from the Bible in 1 Samuel chapter 2. Verse 30, uh, letter B, it says there, Those who honor me, I will honor, but those who despise me, they shall be this day. And I think what we are doing here right now is to uh, honor uh, the Lord, our God, who uh, created the heavens and the earth. And the same God being attributed in a preamble of our constitution, be the sovereign Filipino people imploring the aid of the Almighty God. Mr. President, uh, let me first of all commend our distinguished Senate President for that well-written report uh, delivered uh, almost perfectly, Mr. President. Uh, let me also put on record that I uh, fully support the uh, committee report and congratulate our Senate President not only for handling uh, 20, more than 28 hours of that uh, committee hearing, Mr. President. And at the proper time, Mr. President, uh, this representation wish to raise additional uh, issues for the uh, enlightenment of the body. For example, Mr. President, as we fully support the, uh, the uh, findings of the committee with regard to the IRM releases, we'd also like to point out that uh, not a lot of, uh, of hospitals or healthcare facilities uh, were able to receive. Uh, IRM, especially those who are in need. Another thing, Mr. President, that we raised during the committee hearing, yung maximum uh, IRM po, yung maximum IRM releases ibinibigay doon sa mga paboritong hospital. Yung iba po nakakatanggap ng na konti lamang, sila yung mga nangangailangan, especially at this uh, point in time ng uh, matinding pandemya, ngunit ang nangyayari pag hindi paborito, hindi marirelease lahat. Pero pag paborito, 100% release, uh, wala pang isang linggo na re-release. Another thing, Mr. President, is the basis of DOH PhilHealth costing that we'd like to raise at the proper time. I think maraming uh, kalokohan doon sapagkat hindi maliwanag 
yung mga basis na ibinibigay sa atin on costing. At uh, isa pa, Mr. President, amidst in this uh, uh, pandemic, uh, we also raised during the committee hearing yung pong uh, nakakalungkot na situation ng ating mga COVID-19 patients, especially those who, who, who could die, Mr. President. 48% of them, hindi man lamang uh, na-admit sa ospital, at nakakalungkot, uh, marami pa rin sa ating mga kababayan ang hindi matulungan ng team health uh, for, for obvious reasons, Mr. President. Again, moving forward, Mr. President, let me uh, point out that uh, uh, the Senate President is correct in emphasizing the uh, importance of accountability. And when you talk about accountability, we are not just here to identify itong mga mafia na nakita at na-discover natin sa field health. We wanted to make sure that uh, uh, we destroy this mafia at uh, itong mga mafia na ito ay uh, makulo at uh, 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 may makita natin na crime does not pay at uh, masiguro natin na yung accountability boy na buhay sa ating mga ahensya ng pamahalaan. We need to improve accountability and the audit system of uh, field health, Mr. President, to make sure that uh, we don't... Uh, get itong mga ghost uh, patients, we don't get overpayments, we don't uh, get this uh, false claims and upcasing, uh, Mr. President. It is the uh, broken system that uh, breed corruption. And if we don't uh, fix the system, Mr. President, even if we weed out uh, the syndicates in uh, field health right now, um, a new mafia will uh, just emerge in the future. So I hope that uh, we look into this and again, at the proper time, we will raise uh, uh, these issues. Again, let me give my uh, utmost uh, commendation and congratulations to our Senate President. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Villanueva. Senator Pia Cayetano, Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'd like to start by um, commending uh, the Senate President for this uh, very detailed report. In fact, uh, at some point, I made a mental note to ask him for a copy of his sponsorship speech because uh, it was very clear to understand. And then I realized it was mostly, nung medyo dalawang oras na speech pa rin siya, I realized that it was basically the very same committee report, pero I guess iba talaga ang uh, nagde-deliver eh, may passion and may um, uh, clear understanding of it because it, it, it part of it were quite technical, no? So I'm I'm simply emphasizing that because I realized that teka, nabasa ko na yon and uh, but it's just really different when you hear it being explained to you. Um, it's easier to absorb. So thank you for that for taking the time, um, Mr. President, to explain to to deliver your report and uh, explain it not just to us but uh, to everyone to to the public, the Filipino public. Um, Mr. President, I. Uh, signed the report with reservation and uh, I also mentioned that I may possibly make an amendment and I'd like to very quickly go over, go over a few points that I feel are very important um, to me at least. No? Um, Mr. President, in my amendments which the, the Senate President um, mentioned were, uh, were incorporated in the report, uh, I think I had about seven amendments and I'd just like to point out two of them which I feel are very important. Uh, the first is the immediate implementation of the digitization and unification of telehealth and all medical reports. Um, this is so important, Mr. President, because a lot of the um, fraud or attempted fraud comes from the fact that um, medyo manual, manual o mano mano po itong mga record. If we have a unified and electronic medical record per person, that will ensure that all the data on the benefits per person, and I'm talking about living persons who are uh, who have who are actually uh, as opposed to dead persons or persons who are 115 years old and possibly most likely no longer alive um, if these these records are complete including from their primary care to their hospitalization and even the pharmacies where they purchase the medicine um, all of this information will be make it much easier to conduct audits and um, this will address our fragmented uh, data system, which is presently in place and is a very big problem to us. So that was my first point. Uh, the second point I wanted to point out is also um, to regularly update the case rate system. 
um, to ensure that it is accurate, uh, that the rates are accurate, and that we see the patterns in claims and illnesses reported. Again, Mr. President, pag hindi accurate to, it becomes a basis for outright fraud, yung malicious fraud, or fraud that I have heard of cases are not meant to be malicious, but are, is fraud nevertheless. This would be the um, cases, uh, this would be the situations of upcasing, wherein the the health workers involved would choose to upcase if only to help the patient who may be very poor and otherwise would not have access to even medicine. So to be clear, ang example jan would be may ubot sipon, no? Normally, you would just give um, over-the-counter medicine. But because our field health system up to the present, up, up to the latest the latest um, amendment of the law, did not include um, outpatient care, itong uh, over-the-counter medication, then ang ginagawa ng iba, ina sila to make them qualify for hospitalization just so that they would receive medicines and treatment when in fact they don't need to. So the soon, if we keep our case rate system up to date, then we would also lessen the chances of this happening. And many more provisions of the UHC, Mr. President. The provisions are there, but we really need the leadership and the drive to implement the provisions of UHC because of all the health uh, experts I have spoken to, they will always say, just implement the UHC, just implement the UHC. So the provisions are there to ensure that uh, we minimize this, we minimize or if possible, um, practically eliminate these fraudulent claims. Um, like I said, those are just the top two amendments of that I made that were included and I thank the uh, sponsor for including it. I was not able to include another important point and I hope at the proper time I would be able to make such amendment. But I want to include this in my manifestation for um, to put it on record because I think this would also interest my colleagues. Um, there is a term, itong, um, uh, give me a second to refer to this. Um, there is a practice, Mr. President, wherein the um, field health uh, is currently the ones who train the hospitals in the encoding of the diseases. So ngayon, field health will train these cashiers in every hospital for the encoding. This is such a fertile ground for fraud. Because nagkakaroon na ng relationship between the field health employee, the field health staff, and the cashiers who will now encode a particular kind of disease. Ang dapat po dito, it's go back to our old system where it's DOH who trains the hospital staff on the encoding and it would not be with the cashier. It's with another department that does the encoding. This alone will drastically cut that link between the field health employee and the hospital and that um, that that possibility of encoding a particular disease na hindi naman naiintindihan ng cashier. So, dapat hindi ho cashier ang gumagawa nitong encoding ng international classification of diseases. This is very important and so I hope at the proper time um, the sponsor would allow me to make that amendment. And finally, um, Mr. President, what I would like to include in my in my manifestation um, is that the other reason for my reservation is that um, I have a bit of hesitancy in lumping um, many officials in the cases that we are recommending to be filed. Yes, I definitely agree that there are people liable and there sh they should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law, but I hesitate to um, mention exactly who these people would be for the for the simple reason that in the conduct of our senate investigations we are not bound by the technical rules of evidence that are normally applicable to judicial proceedings that is understood every uh, member of uh, the senate knows that um, however when we do include these names 
uh, and they could be companies. Uh, I, I don't recall that there was any private company that was included in recommend uh, as a rec as a um, that there was any company we included we recommended to be included in any case file. But the fact remains that the report does mention certain names, and therefore because we do not follow these strict rules, I personally am not comfortable mentioning those names. It is just my personal standard, Mr. President, and that's why I put it on record. Um, the Senate President will recall um, his honor that uh, when when uh, Senator Lapson was asking uh, for the opinion of this representation, uh, he said, oh, you're a lawyer. Do you believe that they should be um, uh, charged with malversation? I hesitated and I deferred. I dodged the bullet by deferring to the uh, more experienced um, lawyer in the in the in the Senate, uh, no other than the Minority Floor Leader, who was former Secretary of Justice, and he himself um, hesitated, if I remember correctly, to respond. No, in the affirmative, given that a lot of these things will require, you know, more investigation, more evidence presented, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that for that reason alone, but. By all means, I support the effort that uh, the Senate President has initiated along with Senator Luxon and how the Senate has collectively uh, brought it to this level so that we can prosecute uh, those who are responsible. Um, I leave it at that for now, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank Senator Angara is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to add my voice to the chorus of Hosanna's praising our Senate President, Senator Tito Soto, and I'd like to add our Vice Chairman of the Committee of the Whole, Senator Ping Lakson, also. Uh, to use an analogy they would probably enjoy or, and, and like, they acted like the LeBron James and Anthony Davis uh, if the Senate were like a basketball team. I see Senator Joel shaking his head, and of course, if I were to use or to choose a team to, uh, to make the analogy, I would choose a different team. But since uh, the Senate President and Senator Lapson have done the heavy lifting here, we, we choose their team, their favorite team. Uh, they really, uh, I think, in addition to what my, our colleagues have said, Mr. President, they really um, took out the essence of uh, what was important in all those hours of hearings where I think practically the whole Senate participated actively, and uh, so much testimony was given, so much, so many documents were presented uh, before the committee, and it really, I'm sure it was a very difficult job to drill down and to uh, distill the essence of uh, what we were after here in the committee report, but nonetheless, I pay tribute to the Senate President and to Senator Lapson and everyone who worked on this report for it being very thorough and very clearly written and easily understandable. Uh, it sends a message, a very clear message, Mr. President, that we as a Senate, we say no to corruption, we say no to fraud, we say no to inefficiency, and we say yes to safeguarding the people's money. We say yes to good government, Mr. President, and for that, we thank you for leading the chamber in that direction, Mr. President. And uh, as a closing note, uh, I know many of our colleagues still want to speak in closing, I would just like to say that uh, this is not the end of the war, definitely, Mr. President. There is a long list of recommendations of the report. I think four or five pages of the report are devoted. The last four or five pages are devoted to recommendations to be performed by many go different government agencies. PhilHealth is only one of them. There is mention of the GCG. There is mention of the AMLAC. There is mention, of course, of the DOJ and the Ombudsman and the other important agencies which are important in our quest for justice, Mr. President. Kailangan tulong, tulong po tayo dito. And we must exact accountability, not just from PhilHealth, but from all these government agencies who must perform their duties according to the law, Mr. President. So yun lang po, I, I foresee this will be a long, long war of attrition uh, because napakalalim po ng problema. This is only the first salvo. This is probably pangunahing uh, battle lang po ito. Marami pang susunod uh, na kabanata ito. But again, thank you and congratulations, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Angara. 
and thank you very much for joining the Senate President and uh, this representation in rooting for the Lakers. Senator Villar is recognized. I, I object, Mr. President, I object. <laughs> Mamshi, you're in mute, Mamshi. Uh, Mam okay, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, yes. can you hear me now? Yeah, okay. I want to make a manifestation based on a published article which is entitled Saving Economy and Jobs or Saving Lives, an Unnecessary Choice. It says in the article, based on a study of UNDP and the Ateneo de Manila University, that we don't have to do lockdowns as long as we increase the capacity of our healthcare institutions to 33% from the present 19%. I'm glad that our committee report included, provided that we will require healthcare facilities to do as follows. For a whole healthcare institution, to comply strictly with the DOH requirement on both government and private hospitals to maintain at least 30% 30, 30 of their bed capacity for COVID-19 patients, as stated in DOH Administrative Order Number 2020-016, dated May 4, 2020. Also for private and public hospitals that receive IRM fund should allocate and maintain an additional 7% of their bed capacity as ICU beds for COVID-19 patients at critical stage, while the other healthcare institution should be required as well to allocate and maintain an additional 5% of their bed capacity to ICU beds for COVID-19 patients. And for those levels 2 and 3 hospitals, which receive funds from IRM to establish appropriate COVID-19 testing facility. The cost of the said testing laboratory must be factored in the amount already dispersed to them under the IRM. And for hospital and uh, healthcare institutions to only purchase personal protective equipment or PPEs that are not substandard and preferably sourced locally or made in the Philippines to increase employment for our people during this time of pandemic. Thank you, Mr. President and our Senator Lacson for including these provisions in our committee report. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Senator There's no one else on the list. Um, by the Mr. way, President? Yes. Yes, majority leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, there's a request. Uh, I was just uh, me given a message by our dear Senate President to request that all those uh, line for interpolation, if it can be done tomorrow. Uh, he's requesting if we can well, do it tomorrow. I, I confirm that because uh, a similar request was also made earlier to this yes. representation. So, so with that, Mr. President, uh, we move to suspend consideration of the said measure uh, till tomorrow, Mr. President. There is a motion to suspend consideration of Senate Resolution 461, 474, 475 under Committee Report 107. Is there an objection? Hearing none, suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. 